How did one of the greatest NBA superstars never even win a playoff series? Was he just overrated or did he never have any help? Tracy McGrady was born in Bartow, Florida on May 24th, 1979. As a kid, he always dreamed of making it to the big leagues. However, not the NBA, the MLB. McGrady grew up playing baseball and was a fantastic pitcher, but after a huge growth spurt and a newfound love of basketball after watching hometown star Penny Hardaway, he decided to switch to basketball. T-Mac was good, and like really good. He averaged 23 points, 12 rebounds, 4 assists, and 5 blocks in his freshman year of high school. However, there was a problem. He had a huge ego, which would cause him to skip school, get bad grades, and get into fights with the head coach of the basketball team. McGrady would be cut from the team, but was lucky because one of his AAU coaches was also an Adidas agent responsible for finding young talent. He invited McGrady to the pristine Adidas ABCD summer camp. The camp was filled with 175 of the best young talents in the country, and McGrady was ranked 175th. He wanted to prove himself, so when he found out that Lamar Odom was ranked number one, he demanded to guard him. And boy, did he prove himself absolutely cooking Odom. McGrady immediately had his name put into the spotlight and was offered a transfer to Mount Zion Christian Academy, which he led to the state finals and was named high school player of the year. Instead of going to college, McGrady followed the path of Kobe Bryant and declared for the draft at the age of 18, straight out of high school. He was drafted 9th overall by the Toronto Raptors. The sudden change from warm Florida to cold Canada was hard on the lonely 18-year-old, and his rookie season wasn't very impressive. He came off the bench, played only 18 minutes, and averaged just 7 points. Although he saw a slight uptick in his minutes the following year, his output only increased to 9 points. However, his cousin Vince Carter would be drafted 5th overall in 1998, which finally gave the young McGrady someone to hang out with. Vince immediately became the star of the Raptors, averaging an insane 26 points and 6 rebounds in his second season. McGrady was falling into the shadow of his older cousin, and once again, his ego came in his way. He left Toronto and signed a 7-year, $92.8 million deal to his hometown team, the Orlando Magic, to team up with Grant Hill. T-Mac and Grant Hill were going to be the best duo in the league, however, ankle injuries would haunt Hill, leaving McGrady alone to carry the Magic. With some newfound motivation, McGrady absolutely exploded playing the best basketball of his life. Over the next 4 years, he would play 40 minutes a game and average 29 points, 5.5 assists, and 7 rebounds per game while shooting 45% from the field. He immediately became an all-star and made the all-NBA team every year throughout this 4 year period. He was so good that even Kobe Bryant said that T-Mac was the toughest player to guard. I think I told him one time, I said, bro, you could do everything I could do on the court, but you were 6'10". <laughs> <laughs> Not everything was smooth sailing. After multiple years of losing, there were reported disagreements between McGrady and the Magic's management regarding the direction of the team and its ability to build a championship contending roster around him. And then in 2004, the Magic traded McGrady, the Houston Rockets. The move to Houston offered McGrady a fresh start and the opportunity to team up with a prime Yao Ming. The pairing of McGrady and Yao was anticipated to make the Rockets championship contenders. McGrady continued to play great basketball, but just like in Orlando, his star teammate would struggle with injuries. Yao struggled with foot injuries and once again, T-Mac was left to carry his team. McGrady would try his best and would put up some crazy numbers while doing so, like the time he scored 13 points in 33 seconds. obviously upset with Manu. Here's McGrady for three. That's easy. 35 seconds to go. Rockets looking for a quick shot. Bowen is all over. McGrady foul is picked up. Yes. Yes. Barrett can't find anybody. They have no timeouts remaining. Finally gets it in to McGrady. McGrady over Bowen for three. Oh, yes! Yes! Tracy McGrady! McGrady for the win! Yes! Unfortunately, after four years of playing for the Rockets, McGrady would suffer a knee injury in 2008 that would plague him for the rest of his career. Not only did this injury impact him physically, but mentally as well. I would say this, um, when I had my micro fractures, probably in my career, like the most depressed I've ever been in my life because I worked extremely hard to be the best player I can be. 
and Grady's skill level and output would decrease every year from that point, scoring less and less. And then in 2009, the Rockets would give up on McGrady and trade him to the New York Knicks. He would bounce around from team to team for the next few seasons before deciding his NBA career was over and that he was going to try and play in China. McGrady was one of the most prolific scorers in the league and was looked up to by NBA superstars like Kevin Durant, Kawhi Leonard, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. But was T-Mac just overrated? I think the clear answer is no. He could do everything on the court. And if Kobe calls you the toughest player to guard, then you're definitely not overrated. If you've made it to the end of this video, that means you've enjoyed this video, hopefully. So if you have, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment because it really does help. But until next time, crossover out.